gardeners celebrate when a seedling emerges above ground, but they know the plant germination starts much sooner with the sowing and nourishment of a seed. Something similar happens with the birth of an industry. Long before new products come to market, the underlying technology is discovered and developed. Industry incubation, the stage between a technological breakthrough and the first instance of product commercialization, shapes subsequent firm and industry structure. Much like the activity below the surface shapes subsequent plant growth. Some investors and managers focus on commercialization as the sole goal, and most academic research takes the same scope. Our research forthcoming in the Strategic Management Journal, highlights how this approach is like starting a book in the middle. Entrepreneurship and innovation lend themselves to agricultural metaphors, but we literally study seeds and the agricultural biotechnology industry. Here are six findings from our research that can guide the strategic decisions of managers, while also pointing to fertile ground for further academic research. First, it took 18 years for a scientific breakthrough in 1977, the figurative and somewhat literal planting of a seed, to grow roots and lead to the first sales of genetically modified seeds in 1995. During this incubation period, knowledge evolved rapidly as firms laid the groundwork for later commercialization. Seeds do the same thing when they grow their root systems before sending up shoots. Second, industry incubation is marked by vibrant investment in technology. Although farmland might appear fallow during germination, this is actually when entrepreneurial activity peaks in terms of diversity and magnitude. As any farmer knows, some of the most exciting activity happens underground. Similarly, firms involved in technological investments outnumber commercializing firms and represent more diverse knowledge sources. Third, we find that knowledge underlying a new industry comes from three main sources. University spin-offs often founded by university researchers contribute core scientific knowledge. Conventional agriculture firms bring complementary knowledge such as plant breeding and access to elite germplasm. Diversifying entrants such as chemical and pharmaceutical firms bring technological capabilities from related fields. Fourth, successful commercialization entails mixing knowledge from all of these three sources. In the same way that a plant's root system benefits from various types of nutrients in the soil, product commercialization efforts are visible to everybody. But below the surface, knowledge comes not only from the commercializing form itself, but also through exchange of knowledge in acquisitions and licensing arrangements. Fifth, there are alternate paths to profit besides commercialization. Some firms that fail to commercialize lose everything, of course, but some continue to operate by licensing their technology, and many others attract huge premiums as the targets of acquisitions. Thus, what looks like unfruitful experimentation on the surface can actually be significant in the root system. Firms that never bring any product to market may still contribute knowledge to the industry and capture value. Investors who think the only winning strategy is being first to market need to rethink their definitions of success and failure. Sixth. Not all types of investing firms are equally likely to bring a product to market. Indeed, knowledge under possession of each firm type may equip them for a particular mode of value capture. In our study, diversifying entrants such as Dow Chemical and Monsanto dominated the commercialization process. But university spin-offs still found payoffs. 
usually by selling their firms or by licensing their know-how. Conventional incumbents were also attractive as targets of acquisition. These findings show how studying new industries beginning at first product commercialization ignores how they may already be shaped by different knowledge bases, modes of value capture, and cooperative and competitive strategies that play out during the incubation period.